everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Alejandra Jorbat, and I'm very happy that you are here joining this Global Power Platform Bootcamp Edmonton 2023. This is the first time that Edmonton participates in this worldwide event, so I am thrilled to be the one organizing and presenting in this fantastic event. Okay. So I can see that Francisco is there already. Thank you, Francisco, for joining. Thank you so much. And I see Mark, thank you so much for being back. Awesome, I'm very glad you're back. <laughs> Excellent. Well, this workshop will be about um, cleaning uh, data cleaning techniques, intermediate, advanced. And first, I would like to thank to Microsoft for organizing this fantastic event worldwide. Also, I would like to thank uh, InfoRiver for being our sponsor. So today, at the end of the event, we're gonna have a Kahoot game, and I'm gonna be asking questions, or that game will have questions from all the sessions. So make sure you take notes. If you missed the previous sessions, just take a quick look at the recording. They, we kept the recordings in the channel that I created for this event. And the, the price will be a three months free license with Matrix Premium and InfoRiver charts. And that is awesome. If you missed uh, Federico's presentation this morning, I, I recommend that you take a look again because you can see how beautiful uh, visuals you can uh, create and in no time. Okay, so I strongly recommend that you take a look to that. And I'm gonna send here the link to the Kahoot game. That will be around in two hours, 10 minutes, we'll start. So if you want to participate, the winner will get, only the first place will get this free license, okay? We gave away another one during Federico's presentation. Um, the, the second license will be given to, to the winner um, the, from the Kahoot game. Okay? Excellent. So I'm going to say here is the Kahoot game. So make sure that if you want to participate, that is the link. And for now, let me start by sharing my screen. Oh, those who don't know me, let me see. Ah, and I didn't prepare my slide. I, I organize and I ask everybody to send me theirs, but I didn't, uh, I don't find mine. So anyhow, I, I couldn't find it. <laughs> so my name is Alejandra Horvat and uh, I'm a CPA in Canada. I live in Edmonton and I am a content creator. I have two YouTube channels where I share, share uh, tips, tricks, and especially in Power Query. And what else do I do here? Um, um, that's, oh, I'm an Excel expert. I'm a certified Excel expert. I have been working with Excel for over 20 years and I love the tool. So I, I love, love Excel. Okay, let me start by sharing my screen and in just one minute. Um, perfect. Okay. I hope you can see it. Yeah, I can see, you can see it. <laughs> Excellent. Let me see, just make sure because I have this in two channels in YouTube. I have it in LinkedIn as well. So I'm just making sure that everybody can see me properly. Excellent. I'm gonna start by showing you the files, the ones that we are gonna work with today. They are PDF files, I have my desktop, a folder called demo 2023, February 25th, and it's actually demo two. I have a folder that says PDF. I'm gonna double click there and I'm gonna show you. I have four files here. Each file belongs to each city that we buy from. Let's say I buy stuff from there and is this the one? No, these are my stores. So these are gonna be my sales or it could be an information, it could be your cost, it could be your sales. Uh, you can have that type of information. In my case, I just need, uh, I just created some data to show you how we are gonna combine all these tables 
However, these tables are not consistent. So I have A, B, O, D, those are the names of the columns, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns in this table. This has only one sheet or one page. This is Edmonton. Edmonton has two sheets. The first sheet has one, one, one empty column. It has name. It has other three columns with information. It has a column two without information. And then it has column D and L. Those have numbers. And, oh, and that's the first page. The second page has more columns. Calgary, Calgary has only four columns and it has only one page. And Victoria has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 columns. And it has only one page. So as you can see, the names of the columns are not consistent. The layout is not consistent and files can have more than one page. And that those pages are not necessarily the same. So how are we gonna work this to make this dynamic to every time that I save a file on this folder that I just show you, I, we will do that at the end. I will have a folder with additional information with another three cities. So how are we gonna do this dynamically that every time that I put a new city here in this folder, all my process, all my information is gonna be updated, it's gonna be clean and it's gonna be ready to go. So let me close all these files. This is the final product. Here I have all the cities, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Victoria, and I have here all the columns together from all the files, and I have the grand total. You can see that I don't have any empty columns. We are gonna eliminate those ones dynamically for those files who may have or may not have them. I'm gonna just double click here to my query that I just, prepare for you so as final product, just to make sure that my process work. Control C plus to, make, to zoom in. In this part, are just a very quick reminder. Power Query uses the M uh, formula language. That is the, the, the formal name, M formula language, or what is better known as M. Either works, right? So. That is the language that Power Query uses. And also keep in mind that Power Query works with primitive and structured values. Primitive values are numbers, text, dates, binary, etc. Structured values are records, lists, and tables, this is a table. This is a structure value. This structure value has primitive values inside, okay? More, very important that I forgot to mention last session, and I think it's very important to keep those basic concepts in mind. Excellent. The final product is bringing the files that I just show you as binary. It's going to tra transform that information into tables. It's going to bring that information from each file. We're going to get the content of those files. We're going to transform all that information inside of the column. We're going to transform the nested tables. Last workshop, we created a custom function to transform all the files in the folder. This time, we're gonna work with the files, with the tables or the files on the nested tables. Yes, on the nested tables. Inside of my column data, we are gonna create all those transformations just right here. This is what we're gonna develop. Once we have this, we have a problem because the files doesn't don't indicate which city they belong to. So that is what we're gonna add over here. We're gonna add the city to the original tables. And from there, we're gonna combine them and we're gonna change the type so the numbers can work properly in the pivot table. And then we're gonna bring that to our pivot table 
that is exactly what I have in here. That is the final product. So let me do something very quickly here. I'm going to copy my code just in case something goes wrong. I can always go back because we only have one hour. So I'm going to open a new file. I'm going to start from scratch. From here, I'm going to go to data, get data from file, from folder, because we're going to work with all those files, right? So PDF, desktop, demo2, PDF, open. We are going to see the content of that folder. I'm not going to combine. I'm not going to load. I'm going to transform. I need to transform this information first. I need to clean it. I need to organize it. I need to do that first before I can load it, before I can even combine it, right? I need to clean it. I need to process it before even I can combine it. So for that reason, Control C plus to zoom in. On the left, I have the name of my query which in this case is the name of the file. I'm going to call this solve live. And I'm going to minimize the area for the queries. Remember, this is a workshop intermediate advanced. So I'm, I'm going to go a little bit fast with some of the steps that uh, with some of the steps. <laughs> OK, so here the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to transform the information that is coming from the content column because I don't want this to be as binary. And for that reason, to start with, I don't want to keep all the columns that I don't need. At the end of my closing parenthesis, I'm going to project which columns I want to keep. And for that reason, I'm going to provide the double square bracket. Single square bracket will bring a list. Double square bracket allows me to bring the name of the columns that I want to keep only. And in this case, I want to keep content. I go out of one, my first set of square brackets. I'm going to press comma. And I can provide the second single set of square brackets that is going to be name. We have one set of square brackets grabbing that information. And then we have another set of square brackets grabbing the name of each column that I want to keep. And those names, of those columns are separated by the comma. I'm going to press Enter. And here we have only the two columns that I need, and I didn't have to create another step. Now, next step is transform this binary information into PDF files. I'm going to press FX to add a new step. From there, I'm going to say table, uh, transform columns, open parentheses. It's asking me for a table. The table is coming from my previous step source, and I need to provide the transformation or the operation as list. For that reason, I provide the um, curly brackets. Um, with this, I'm telling Power Query that this is a list. I need to provide the name of the column that I'm going to transform, comma, which transformation I'm gonna, am I going to process. I need to provide the each word, which is a key for a function. Uh, so I can say process the following. And what we're going to provide uh, process is PDF. I never remember the formula or the function, I mean, but I just press PDF, and then I can see the list. I need to bring, to, to get information from a PDF file, I need to provide the PDF as binary. That's exactly what I have in my content uh, column. I'm going to provide the underscore. That means that Power Query is going to look to every single line of that column. I'm going to go to the end after the, the closing curly bracket, closing parentheses, and I press Enter. Now you see that I don't have a binary anymore. It says table. Now I can see that I have the content of those PDF files. The content is pages and tables. What I want is the table. I don't want the pages. And remember, with PDFs, it's very tricky. Sometimes if you bring the, the pages, they break. And sometimes the pages may have a footer, may have the page number or, or something like that. And we don't need that when we're processing our information. In my case, if the tables are decent enough to work with, then I bring the tables instead. If the tables are broken, then I will I may need to make to do more work. But in my case, my tables are well structured that I can bring the tables without a problem. So now that I have this, now I need to find a way to bring here only the tables. I don't want the pages. Well, that's very easy because after the each here on the formula bar, I'm gonna tell Power Query to select only the rows that meet this criteria. So I'm going to say each table, select rows, 
open parenthesis, it's asking me for a table. The table is the one that I'm seeing here at the bottom. And that is after the closing parenthesis for PDF tables, I'm going to provide a comma. And the condition, what is my condition? What do I want this to have? Well, I want that the column kind, I'm going to provide that in uh, square brackets, needs to be equal to table. Shift enters to go to the next line here on the formula bar. So what I'm saying is please select the rows that are coming from the, the tables that you are seeing here, that the PDF content. Bring me the information that is inside of the column kind and that is equal to table. And I'm going to press enter. And I didn't, it didn't like something because I didn't provide the closing parentheses for the table select rows. And now I press enter, provided that, press enter, and it gives me an error. Let's see what the error says. And it says that we cannot um, type binary. Why not? See, I'm telling you here. So let me see. That's why I bring my code, because I didn't want surprises, and I didn't expect surprises here right away. So, oh, yeah, I know why. When I provide table select rows from the table, I'm not telling Power Query, please process the following. I'm just telling this is the table. This is the column that the most say equal table, most equal table. I'm not telling Power Query, please process the following. So each, what are you gonna do? You are gonna process something. You need to, to provide the each word. And now I don't have the error. And now I have only the files, sorry, only the content that equals table. In this case with Edmonton that we have two different tables. Now I can see that I have both and every, everything else only one, and it, I don't have sheets anymore. Perfect. That is just fantastic. What we're going to do next is, is quite exi exciting. <laughs> so let me see. What did I do over here? I'm going to, oh, yeah, I need to expand this. Now that I see what information I'm bringing from my PDF files, I'm ready to expand the column content. I'm going to click at these two arrows on the top. Uh, I don't want to use the original name as a prefix. And what I want to bring is only the column data. That is where all the tables are. So I'm going to say, OK. Now you can see that I have, if I click beside table on the white side, I can see the content of every single table that we have here. And now you can see that I have two rows for Edmonton because I have two different tables. Excellent. Let's create a new step here on the formula bar. I'm going to click there and I'm going to say equal. We are going to transform the column data. We are going to transform those tables. So I'm going to say Table, transform columns right here, open parentheses. The table is the table that is coming from our previous step, which is custom two, which is the table that we're seeing here. I'm going to press comma. I need to provide the transformation operations in as a list. So remember, curly brackets. Inside of those curly brackets, I need to provide the name of the column we're going to transform, the column data, comma, which transformation I want to process, I want to process the following. I want to pre first promote the first line as headers. If I go one step before this and I click beside the table, I can see that my first line has the headers for every single table. So I want to bring that um, to the top uh, as header because the next step is critical to do that. So each, I'm going to say table, promote headers, open parentheses. Which table do I want to, to apply the, that formula, the function to? Every single line of the column data, because every single line has one table. I'm going to go out of there, close parentheses. I'm going to press Enter. And now you will see that we have our first line promoted as headers. Excellent. We are working very well there. And this time, I'm not going to work with uh, the advanced editor because we are going to see every single step that we process with the uh, nested let. So it's going to be easier to see every single step here. So for that reason, I hope uh, I'm, I'm asking you just a little bit of patience with me just to make sure that 
we are going to see everything. So saying that, we can process everything with this function. I'm going to just go quickly to view advanced editor to show you that our query starts our process with expression let and closes with the expression in. Inside of that, we have our variables. Our variables have functions that are going to return values. Every single uh, variable ends with a comma that indicates to Power Query that there is another variable, another step after. The last variable, the last step, doesn't have a comma. That is telling Power Query. That is the end. I'm ready to close with the end. Uh, expression and after in there will be the name of the variable that I want to bring as a result or it can be that variable and we can apply a function to that variable but it will we need a variable that is part of the result in our case we just need that variable or that step to be the result of our query right saying that what we're going to do now, we are going to create here after the, this each on the last step, we are going to create a nested len, let and a nested in. The result of that will be the result of this specific variable. And then this variable will have that value, and that's the value that we're going to get at the end. From there, I close that. This is our last step. It's called custom tree. After this each, I'm going to press and shift enter and shift enter again. I'm going to provide a let and I'm going to call this variable A equals. And what this variable is going to do is going to just promote the headers, which is there already. From there, I'm going to provide a comma and I'm going to create my next variable. My next variable will be B. That's going to be equal. What do I want to do with that? Well, I'm going to introduce you, if you don't know it, I'm going to introduce you to table profile. And I learned this function from Melissa de Corte. Fantastic. All her material is amazing. So if you haven't heard about her, which I doubt it, but if you don't know about her, I encourage you to follow her in LinkedIn. Her content, as I said, is amazing. Okay. Now I'm going to bring table profile to the table that is coming from my previous variable, that is this table that we're seeing here with the headers promoted. I'm going to end my statement here with my expression in, and I'm going to provide what I want as a result of this uh, nested let and in, and I want the, the value of P. I'm going to press the check mark, and now you will see that inside we have the profile of every single table that we have here. What it's telling us is the name of the column, the minimum, the maximum that that table has, the average, the standard deviation, the count, the null count, and the distincting count. What I really want from here is the count and the null count. And that is because that is going to tell me the count is the total of rows that I have in every single table. Then the null count is going to tell me how many empty lines, how many uh, rows have no information, as are completely empty, are null, right? So in this case, I don't have any. I have zero nulls. But what happens if I go here? Here in this table, I have two columns that have the same number of rows. They have nulls. That means that that table that column is empty, right? It's completely null. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to say that I want to have the numbers from the column count minus the null count. And it's, the result, I'm going to keep only the ones that have zero. That means that those columns are empty and I can dynamically remove those columns regardless of tables coming later on regardless of the name of those columns, okay? And I can see Christian is joining. Thank you so much for joining, Christian. I'm very happy to see you here. I'm so, so awesome. Oh, yes, the, uh, 
yes, Melissa's uh, courses are fantastic. It's awesome. All that we can learn from her is amazing. The, honestly, I don't. I know a lot of things because of her. <laughs> so, so that's fantastic. Thank you for joining. It's so nice to see you. Great. Okay. Now that I have that, let's do that. Let's add a column to this table that we have here at the bottom. So I'm going to, after this, uh, uh, closing parenthesis, I'm going to add a colo comma because that means I'm going to have another variable after. So I'm going to say C equal. And what I want is to add a column to that specific table, right? So I'm going to say table at column, open parenthesis, to which table? Ah, to this table that is coming from my variable B or from my step B, let's say. I'm going to say comma. What is the name of that new column? I'm going to call that column difference because that's going to have the difference between the count and no count. So, comma. What is the operation? What do I want to process in that column? Well, I'm going to say each. I want to have count. I need to provide the name of the, co the column. And that is going to be minus null count. And that's all that I want. And now I don't need to provide a comma at the end, but now I need to change here the result. Now I want to bring as a result the value of C. I'm going to click at the check mark. I'm going to take a peek to each table here. And now I can see the difference. This is 40. No, that's, that doesn't have any null um, columns. And what happened here? Here I can see this table. I have two zeros. Excellent. That means these two columns are empty. OK, perfect. We are making progress here. What do I need to do to separate this zero from the other ones? Let's just select the rows that equal zero. And then we will have from the column column, we're going to have the name of those columns that now we have identified and now we can call and remove dynamically. OK? I uh, thank you so much, Christian. It's so nice. I am, yeah, I'm so glad you are here. Thank you so much for your kind words. I really appreciate them. So thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, now here we have this information. Let's create another variable. After my C, and that's why I I had to show you in the formula bar because if we do this on the advanced editor, it's not as easy to see the progress step by step. Right? It's not too friendly to see all the code here. I will show you the code at the end in the advanced editor, but it's important to see the progress step by step when we see it in the formula bar, right? So I'm gonna add another column, shift enter to go to the next line. I'm gonna say D, I'm gonna call it D, this uh, uh, variable. And I'm gonna say, I want to select, right? So I'm gonna use table select. Table select rows, I open parentheses. The table is coming from my last variable, that is C, right? That is the table that we're seeing here with the difference. I'm going to press comma. What is the condition? Well, I remember, I don't forget the each this time that I forgot last time. <laughs> so I'm going to say each. So I want that every single item from the column difference that is equal to zero, I want to keep that. I want to select that. I don't add a column at the end of this uh, parenthesis, but I'm going to change the result instead of C. Now I want to bring the value of D, and I'm going to press check mark. And now let's see what happened. The first table doesn't have zeros. That means there are no empty columns. The second table has two columns, column one and column two. The third table, nothing. The fourth table, nothing. And the fifth table has two uh, columns that are empty as well. OK, excellent. Now that I know that, what I want to keep is just the name of the column. That's all that I want. So for that reason, I'm going to just project that in here in the same step I'm going to make a projection and bring this as a list because that is exactly how I need to provide this information to the uh, function table remove uh, columns. So after my parenthesis that closes table select rows, I'm going to open square brackets and I'm going to say different, uh, actually column, because I just want the name of the column, column. 
And I'm going to press enter. Oh, and something happened here. And I did it wrong. For some reason, I had that extra closing square bracket. And now you can see that our column data has list. In this case, it's empty because it, I don't have empty columns. But this one has two columns listed, right? And excellent. I see a comment from Christian. Seeing, I see, seeing the progress, as you say, is what made me love Power Query over DAX. Honestly, God, every time that we see something new in Power Query, that honestly, yes, I see progress and I feel so good with DAX. I, I know it's very powerful and I, I appreciate that, but I, I just feel disappointed when <laughs> the measures don't work. Like, oh my God, I don't know anything. <laughs> so with Power Query, you can always get something right. Even if it's a little, you feel like it's so awesome to make some progress. So it's, yes, I agree, Christian. <laughs> so excellent. Well, now that I have this information as a list, what I want to do is remember that from our variable A, we bring our table with all the columns, empty or not empty. So I'm going to change just the result here so you can see. I'm going to uh, select or I'm going to uh, give the variable A here and I'm going to say, I'm going to press the, the, the check mark. And now you see that we have here the original tables with the first line promoted as headers. We have these empty columns here, right? OK, if that's the case, then I'm going to go to my formula bar. I'm going to press comma at the end of the square brackets um, outside of column. And I'm going to shift enter. I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to say e, e equals. What do I want to process there? I'm going to say table. Remove columns. Now I am able, I'm able to remove those columns that I have on the list, right? So I'm gonna open parentheses. Which table? The table is coming from my D variable, comma. That is that table that I have. Uh, I, I don't have it here anymore. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, is the A, 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 A. And uh, now yes. Now this table is the table that I'm seeing here at the bottom. That is the table that has all the columns. I want to remove the empty columns from there. So that is the table base, let's say. Which columns do I want to remove? And I need to provide that information as any. But be careful, because it says as any, and then you start providing information as record or as other thing, and sometimes it doesn't like it. What I'm sure it likes it is list. So I have list coming from my the variable that is the name of the columns that are empty. I only have the because that is the value of the is the list of those columns. Now I'm here, I'm going to change after the in, I'm going to change this for e. That's the value that I want to bring. That is this table without the empty columns. I'm going to press the check mark. And now if I take a peek here in Edmonton, this one that had the empty columns, they are not there anymore. Let's go to the last one, Victoria. Doesn't have that, those empty columns either. Excellent. We have deleted those columns dynamically. Every time that we have new tables with whatever the header is for those empty columns, they are going to be removed dynamically. Perfect. Now what I need, I need to do? Well, I need to normalize this data. I need to bring all the information that is similar in one column. Right. For example, the name of the columns, it could be months, it could be years, it could be something in a specific. Then what I can do is just bring those titles, let's say, bring it in one column and then bring all the amounts in another column. To do that, I need to unpivot. I need to pivot these columns. So I'm going to use the unpivot column function because I want to keep only the name column as is and all the other columns, I want them to be unpivoted. After the closing parenthesis from the E variable, I'm going to press shift enter. I, pro I provided a comma and then I, I press shift enter. I'm going to go with F is my next variable. I'm going to say equal. And what I want to do there is table unpivot other columns, this one. 
open parenthesis, the table is coming from my previous step, which is these tables that we are seeing at the bottom, is E, comma, I'm gonna say pivot columns, which columns do I want to keep that without changing? It's only the column name. I'm gonna provide that in as list is how it's asking me to provide that. I'm gonna say name. I need to type it exactly the same as the, the title of that column is. And after the, square, the quotation marks, if I have more columns to stay like that, I provide another, a comma and another quotation marks and the name of the, the other column. In my case, I have only one for that reason. I can just close that curly bracket, comma, uh, okay, the attribute column, that is the one that is going to have the titles of the columns, that's going to be, uh, I need to provide that as a, te as a text, so I'm providing the quotation marks, and I'm going to call that, let's say, code, because <laughs> in my case, it's just letters, right? So it could be year, as I said, could be year, could be month, could be something else. So in my case, I'm going to say code. Now, the amount, the value, where all the amounts are going to go, well, that's going to be called, I'm going to call it amount. And that's, that's it. I'm going to change the, the value that I want as a result. I'm going to provide F. And I'm going to select the check mark. I'm going to click there. And now you can see that our uh, tables are normalized, right? So now I have in tabular form all the code, all the name of the columns are on the code column and the amounts, all the values are on the amount column. Excellent. I should be able to combine. However, I don't have the uh, what's it called the city name inside of this file, so I don't know where this information is coming from. So I'm going to do this um, in a very simple way. We have done that before. I, uh, as I said, we don't have. We still we are both doing well with the time, but uh, just in case, I'm going to try to do it as fast as possible. <laughs> So just in case there are some, there is something else later on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create another uh, column. So after the equal, I'm going to say table add column, open parenthesis, to the table that I'm seeing here, which is coming from the previous step, custom tree, comma. What is the name of the new column? I'm going to call it final. Why do I want to process it? Well, I need to say, please process the following through the each uh, keyword, and I'm going to add a column inside of these tables that are inside of my column data. So I'm going to say table at column, open parenthesis, the table, the tables are coming, as I said, in, in square brackets, data, that's the column that where our tables are coming, comma, the name of that new column inside of those tables is going to be city. Comma. What do I want to bring there? Well, instead of each, remember that this environment that we are seeing here is different to the environment where these tables are. If I say each and I provide name, which is the content of the column name, this is going to create an error. I'm going to press enter. If I go to the table, you can see that the column city has an error. I'm going to click to one of the tables so you can see what the error says. And it says that the field name of the record wasn't found. And that is because it's looking in this table to find the column name. And of course, this table doesn't have that column. For that reason, and as Christian, uh, is, is, he, is saying here exactly how it should be. We cannot use the each because the each works for the table where we are at right now. So this first each works because we are adding a column to this specific table that we see. We are adding another column. Now we are adding two tables that are in a different environment. The each this each is referring to the environment from these tables, and these tables don't have the column name. For that reason, what we need to do is very simple. We just need to provide a symbol for a function 
and the parameter inside of that, uh, inside of the parameters. This is going to tell Power Query, please allow me to go inside of this table and bring the information from this environment and bring that to the nested environment. And by doing this, I'm going to press Enter. You can see that now it's like the key that you can go inside, open the door, and allow information from an external table to the internal table, let's say, okay? Yes, exactly. We need the function generator with any text as parameter. Yes, that's why I like to provide the X. It's like very easy for me. I always remember. And if things don't work, because sometimes it's like, oh, do, do I need to provide a parameter or not? And I just put X and it works magically. So excellent. Thank you, Christian. I really appreciate it. Okay, now I can see I have the city, but I don't like to see the city with the dot PDF, right? Uh, yes, outside context versus nested context operations can be very helpful. Yes, exactly. And uh, uh, Melissa de Corte in, in her class has a very good explanation of these different environments. It's very, very helpful. Yes, thank you, Christian. Okay, now, as I said, now I have the, the name of the files inside, but it, it brought the extension, right? PDF, P, dot PDF, I don't want that. So here I'm gonna go to my formula bar again, and where it's before the name of the column, I'm gonna say text before the limiter. Open parenthesis, it's asking me for the text. The text is coming from that column that I'm bringing the name comma, what is my delimiter? My delimiter is the dot. Excellent. That is what I want to, from the dot and to the right, don't bring it. Just bring me whatever it is before that dot. And I close parentheses for the table before the limiter, close parentheses for the table at column to the nested tables, and I close parentheses for the table at column to the table that we are seeing here. I'm going to press Enter. If allows me, if it doesn't want to work, then just press the check mark. <laughs> okay. And now you will see that we have the city with the name of this, uh, the column city with the name of that city without the extension of the file, right? So perfect. I can just expand this information because all the tables are going to be just exactly in the same structure, have the same number of columns, have the same name of those columns. So I'm going to create another step here, fx. And when I use the table combine, it will keep or it will expand that information. It will expand those tables and it will combine them. And it will remove, it will ignore any other information in other columns. That's why I'm using that way I'm incorporating the name of the city inside of the nested table. So when I expand this, when I combine it, I just keep the content of the nested table, that is all this content, and all the other information is completely ignored, right? So after the equal, I'm gonna say table combine, open parentheses, to the tables, where are the tables? Which table do you want me to combine? And I need to provide that as a list. Remember that as a projection with a simple, single uh, set of square bracket, we are gonna bring from the last step, we're gonna project that table and we're gonna bring the information from the final column as a list, close parentheses, enter. And look, here we have all our tables, Calgary, and now we have we have a lot, Edmonton, and so on. We will have all the series, even a lot more. Here we have all the series from all the files, right? So excellent. The thing that I need to do here, and I always forget, is to change the data type for the numbers. And if I don't do that, then my pivot table doesn't work properly. I have changed this column as number, whole number. I just click at the square and I change it for whole number. It was as a text. You can see Power Query created that step for me. I'm gonna go home, close and load, close and load too. And I'm gonna bring this as a pivot table, but 
uh, it's the only query that we have. In this case, I'm going to just go ahead and create it as pivot table in the existing worksheet on P2, and I'm going to say OK. Here we have the options. I'm going to go amount to the values. I'm going to go to city to the rows. And I'm going to bring the code, which is the name of the columns, right? So we can see that we have no empty columns at all. We have all the columns from all the files. Not all the files have information in all the columns, and that's OK. But now I'm not limited. I'm not restricted to certain specific amount of columns or name of columns. This is completely dynamic. OK, and I can see, oh, look at this, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining. I'm very, appreci very appreciated that you are here. Thank you. I love to share and I, these workshops really, uh, I love it. <laughs> so, so, yes, yes, um, perfect. Christian's uh, saying hi to Claudia. I thank you so much. And I'm very happy to see everybody here. Thank you so much. Excellent. OK. I'm going to just change the format, number format, right click inside of the pivot table, any of the numbers. I'm going to click number, use thousand separator. No, I don't want decimals. I'm going to press OK. For me, it's um, very visual. I just need to see where the thousands are. <laughs> so excellent. Now that we have this, we saw this with four cities, right? Well, let's see what happens when I add more cities to the folder. I'm in my folder PDF. I'm going to go back to my folder demo too. I'm going to go to my folder additional info. I have three series. I'm going to select them and I'm going to press enter. Exactly the same thing, different names of columns. And look, this city has four seats, right? So this is a, an empty column here and Saskatoon. Look how many columns we have here. Look, and we have empty columns. We have Y, 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 uh, and all over the place, right? So it's completely different to the other column, other tables, right? Or the other files. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to close them. Oh, and all of them have only one page. I'm going to go to demo. Oh, actually, I need to copy them first. So I'm going to select them, Control C. I'm going to go back to my PDF folder. I'm going to control V. Here they are. I'm going to go back to my Excel, right click inside of my pivot table, and I'm going to refresh. And here we have the three additional cities, Halifax, Regina, and Saskatoon. And look, with all the columns that we just saw, right? Let me hide this. All the columns now here, of course, these cities don't have any information on with columns with, with this name. But the files that have information on these columns, here they are transformed, regardless if they have empty columns, regardless of the name of the columns. All the name of the columns are here. And remember, we saw this C, 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 and Y, 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 and everything else. Just like that. So that's why I just love Power Query. <laughs> so I hope you find this useful. I love this. Uh, I just, yeah, I cannot have enough. And I love sharing these tips with you because honestly, that this can save a lot of time. Um, I work in accounting and it really is a lifesaver having Power Query. Power Query here. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, I haven't passed your email to Federico, but I will. I will. I just finished this and I, I, I pass that to Federico. Thank you so much for, for joining. Thank you. All the steps will be reduced to a single step. Exactly, exactly, Christian. So it's just so awesome. Yeah. Uh, OK, uh, let's see. This says, Christian, if someone wants to protect the code from beginners trying to modify, can replace the step after in with the exact function definition of the step. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they need to know how to do that. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> that's a very good point. Thank you. Yes. I know, right, Christian? It says, my favorite option in Power Query is refresh all button. Yes, it's just so magical when you see this and it works. It's like, oh, this is so awesome. So, OK, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, exactly. And let's say, well, now the files are there. Let's say if I want to remove these last two, Regina and Saskatoon, let's select those two. I'm going to say Control X, and I'm going to put them here for now. 
our PDF. So the, they are not here anymore. So I should see them gone. So I'm going to go this time to data, refresh all. I'm going to click there and look, the files are gone. No problem. I don't have errors because the, the columns are not there anymore. Like, no, this is completely dynamic and it, it can expand, it can reduce depending on the files that you have there. Okay. Of course, there are ways that we, you can also prevent errors. Uh, we didn't do it this time because of the time, but I'm going to go very quickly to my query. Here, when you have the source, you can actually make sure that you filter this information like only by uh, PDF, must contain, uh, contains, uh, yeah, must equal, let's say. I can add a step here, it's here. I'm gonna say FX, I'm gonna insert, it's gonna, it's not gonna affect anything, but it's gonna prevent errors in the future. So after equal, I can say table select, I select rows. And I can say from this table, what I want to select is each. I want that the um, yeah, text contains, text contains, actually, yeah, text contains. Open parentheses. And what is the text? The text is coming from my column name. And it needs to contain PDF. And if I'm afraid about the um, capitals and lowercase, and can say ignore case. So in this case, capital or lowercase doesn't matter. And I'm gonna present that nothing happens here. But if I save an Excel file in my folder, this filter is gonna keep only the PDF files. Also, you can prove this as saying that uh, doesn't not begin. So, and I'm gonna say text contain and let me do this. It's gonna give me an error. Let me remove this so you can see. And I can say and text um, starts, starts with, and the text is also coming from my column name and what should I start with? And is the wave, <laughs> this teal, this wave. And I'm saying that it has to start with, I don't want to start with. So I'm gonna add the not in front of that. And I'm gonna press enter. So this prevents to having file open, files open. When the file is open, this wave, this teal, will come in front of the name of the file. And if that's the case, and if it's a PDF file, then that file will come twice in our table. So we don't want that as well. And with these two filters, we are preventing errors to people who may save Excel files or CBS files, any other type of files in our folder, and also is preventing errors for having the file open, okay? Uh, here, nothing changes because Everything is closed and there is no other files than PDF, but it prevents errors in the future. Okay, excellent. So this is all that I have for you today. I really appreciate I, I appreciate your uh, your company today, and thank you so much for the comments. I really appreciate that. Again, if you want to participate in the Kahoot in the game Kahoot at the end of the event, we have only one more presentation, and after that presentation is almost in in an hour fifteen minutes. The a Kahoot game will start and you can play and the winner, the first place of that, uh, the game will win a one free license for three months with Mat Matrix Premium and InfoRiver charts. And this is courtesy of our sponsor, InfoRiver. So if you want to play and try to, to win, go ahead. Naga Nagasatia, Nagasatia, I'm, hop I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly, won the first uh, license this morning uh, during Federico's uh, presentation. So I encourage you to come and play. So you will be tested 
if you attended to the sessions, you will know the answers. So thank you so very much, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. You are very kind, and I'm really happy to see everybody here. Thank you. I'm, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. And I'll let you in. There are so too many events today, but fortunately, uh, there are recordings. So you can always come back and watch them anytime. So thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.